Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the most exciting event on television, Riot, Righteous Invasion of Truth, presented by the Power Broadcasting Network, Abel Damina is my name i want to welcome you to the broadcast today guys listen we're going to have an exciting time in the study of god's word you know the entrance of his word give it light and it give it understanding to the simple as you come before the word of god with the simplicity of your heart ready to be equipped ready to be empowered ready to grow and ready to align with the thoughts of god the plan and the intent of god for your life Get ready, it's going to be an exciting time together today. Call a friend, call a family member, help me share the video. Let's get the word around the world. You know, as a ministry, there's a mandate of God on our lives to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. That's the mandate that is driving us to get this word to you every opportunity we have now listen i have an instruction clearly to set up a global discipleship academy where i'm able to disciple as many of you as are following our teachings as many of you as have been christians but nobody has discipled you discipleship it's an opportunity where somebody that is being discipled is given an opportunity to learn the fundamentals the basics the things that enables you to live out your true realities in Christ so that you're able to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, he said, all power is given to me. And then he said, you go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Discipleship is that opportunity where we're able to teach you all the things that Jesus commanded and help you align with the plan, the purpose, and the will of God for your life. We've pushed out the adverts, and I just want you not to be left out. So if you have not been discipled, you want me to disciple you, there's an email on the screen right now. If you shoot an email to that email address, we'll respond to you quickly because we're getting ready to start the classes. It's going to be online. It's global and online. We're going to give you all the details that gets you enlisted into the class. And it's a free discipleship school. You're not paying any fees. Secondly, those of you that are not able to send emails, we have a WhatsApp number from anywhere in the world. If you shoot us a WhatsApp message, we will send you all the info so you can be a part of the discipleship classes. So we're able to disciple you, equip you, empower you to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God for your life. That's how we start 2022. And thirdly, I have just come out with three books of mine and I want to encourage you to get copies of it. This one is Spirit Life. It's powerful material that helps you. Right from Genesis, the work of the Spirit has not ceased to function in and among men. The Spirit hovered over the waters and God spoke. The scriptures are replete with the work of the Spirit. So in this book, you will learn about the leading of the Spirit. You will learn about knowing how the Father leads his children. You will know about the inward witness, impressions of the Holy Spirit. Powerful book. It will change your life. The second book I just wrote is The Gift and Calling of God. There's a call of God on your life. How to locate that gifting and calling, how to steer it up and walk in the fullness of its reality. The third book is How to Win in Life, Walking in Love. The love of God that never fails. This book will equip you to walk above bitterness, strife. It will equip you to walk above all the things that the devil can offer anybody. And it will help you never to give room to the devil. These are three powerful materials that will change your life. Finally, remember I also have a book. It's called The Christocentric Meal. It's a daily devotional. And they are sermon notes that a pastor can preach in his church for three years. They are Christ-centered messages, very sound exegesis. It's called the Christocentric meal. It's on the screen. If you call our office or email our office to order for any of these books or all of it, 
I'm telling your office will get back to you quickly and make sure these materials get to where you are. Don't forget that our mission as a church is to equip and empower you to live out your realities in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. All right, I'm expecting to hear from you today on Discipleship Academy because classes are starting any moment from now. So don't procrastinate, don't delay. Looking forward to hear from you. Now, fasten your seatbelts as I take you on a gospel adventure into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy fellowship. Happy birthday from Triple G. Dr. Abel Damina is the founder and president of Abel Damina Ministries International and CEO of Kingdom Life Network, a Christian satellite TV channel covering Africa, America, Canada and parts of Asia. He is the senior pastor of Power City International, a multifaceted, multicultural and multinational gospel center where thousands meet weekly to worship God. He is also the president of Abel Damina Online Mentoring Academy, Aduma, and Abel Damina Ministerial Equipping Network, Admin, with mentees across the globe. Dr. Abel Damina hosts the TV program Righteous Invasion of Truth Riot, together with the Ask the Counselor series on Kingdom Life Network and other broadcasting stations in Nigeria, through which millions are being transformed across the world. He is happily married to his sweetheart Rachel and they are blessed with three lovely ladies Jemima, Jesse Mill and Jaya, the Triple J Plus singing sensation and producers of the Neptune 3 Studios. Oh, what a joy for us to have this opportunity one more time to stand as members and leaders of Power City International 98 Nguaniba Road, Uyo, to celebrate our papa, to celebrate our mentor, to celebrate our coach, to celebrate our leader, to celebrate our bishop, to celebrate the one who has taught us and equipped us and made us to be able ministers of the New Testament. And so today we are happy to identify and to celebrate and to honor our papa, Dr. Abel Damina, on this special day, which is his birthday 2022. So as a church, we say happy birthday, Papa. We love you. The world stands still today to give honor to a man who is given to much simplicity. And all over the world, men have received clarity and focus from the ministry of Dr. Abel Damina through the Online Mentoring Academy, the Intensive Power Bible School held every year and the teaching meetings held in the local church. He is given to much prayer and much devotion and commitment to the study of God's Word and this has brought about a mighty global restructuring in the body of Christ today through his ministry. We want to say a very blissful and happy birthday to our father, Dr. Abel Damina, fondly called Global Baba. And we constantly pray for you that more men will come to know Jesus through you and the word of God has free course through you and your ministry. This is saying cheers to many more years of blanketing the entire blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. Okay, my name is Jessica Izugo and I am the regional coordinator for US Canada. And on behalf of all my crew, my team, I want to wish Papa a wonderful, a glorious celebration towards his birthday. And the truth is Papa has literally transformed our lives I mean, not just our life spiritually, however, it has trickled down, affected the way our outlook concerning our family, our career, and the way we conduct ourselves. Papa will love you. We will continue to expand the ministry. We will continue to make Christ known in and through us. Thank you, Papa. Great grace upon you. Let's go!
We've been on this journey in the book of Ephesians and it's, it's getting more and more exciting. Uh, we've taken time to establish that uh, John chapter 16 verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. He didn't say, I don't want to say it. He said, you cannot. I want to say it, but you lack the capacity to handle what I want to say. Are these not the same people the Bible says are without a parable speaking not unto them? Because all they could handle was parable. So in that sense, I have many things I want to say in the Gospels, but you can't bear them. So we said from Genesis to Malachi is the scriptures or the prophetic scriptures. And then we said from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have the historic books of the humanity of Christ or giving evidence to Christ coming to earth as the incarnate Christ in fulfillment of the prophetic scriptures. The prophetic scriptures have one message, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. All right? And in, in the last service, we began to deal with certain exigencies Jesus did from the book of John chapter 14, where he began to talk about where I am, you will be, what I have, you will have. And he was prophesying about a day, which was the day after he rises from the dead. All right, now 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 but as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that he loves. So this scripture talks about the Old Testament, that the Old Testament people had not seen nor even heard. But the next verse says, but God hath revealed unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So what they didn't see, we have seen because we are the revelation generation. So now Paul begins to explain some of these thoughts from the Old Testament. So that means what God has prepared for those whom he loves, we won't see them in the Old Testament because the Old Testament people never saw and never heard what God has prepared for those whom he loves. But they are revealed to us by the Spirit. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will take that which is mine and he will show it to you. Amen. He will take mine and he will show it to you. And I love the way Jesus said it. All that the Father has are mine. So say I unto you that he will take that which is mine and he will show it to you. He shall glorify me. So we will not see those things that God has prepared for those whom he loves in the Old Testament. We will see it in the epistles. Where will we see it? In the epistles. But people then couldn't see it and people then couldn't hear it. But today, those things that were prepared for us are revealed to us by the Spirit. Amen? And that revelation by the Spirit is called the epistles. The Old Testament points to Christ's death and the glory that will follow. They point to the death of Christ and the glory that will follow. The epistles also speaks of Christ. But the glory of Christ which the epistles reveal is not Christ alone. The Old Testament points to Christ, the sufferings and the glory that will follow. The epistles also point to Christ. But the epistles are not pointing to Christ alone. But the epistles are pointing to the man in Christ. In John 14 to 16, it is all a summary of Jesus' teaching or pointing to this man. And the spirit of truth now reveals this man, the man in Christ. The man in Christ. Jesus gave an instruction about the glory that will follow. But you see that glory that Jesus was talking about in John was the joint glory. The joint glory that he was going to share with the new creation. The joint glory. The glory of God that is jointly shared by anyone who believes. The man in Christ. And Christ in the man. <laughs> yeah. That is the culmination of revelation. 
That's the climax of revelation. The man in Christ and the Christ in the man. The Old Testament foretells the second Adam who is the incarnate Christ, who is the man Christ. How he will suffer and die. In the Gospels, Jesus begins to talk about the last Adam. The last Adam is the new creation. Is a new kind of humanity that never existed before. The last Adam is Christ in the man and the man in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.16 Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we no more. We have known Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth, the incarnate Christ, Christ the man. We knew him like that in the Gospels. But in the Epistles, we don't know him like that anymore. Henceforth know we him no more. In the Epistles. In the Gospels, that's the revelation we have. But that's not the revelation we have in the Epistles. So that's why the Epistles contains that which he wanted to say that they could not be here. So the Gospels captured the man Jesus of Nazareth. The epistles reveal Christ in us and we in Christ. You will never see that in the Gospels. You will never see in the Gospels who you are in Christ. The only thing you will see in the Gospels is how Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil and parables that pointed to faith in Christ. That's all you will see in the Gospels. To be able to see the new man in Christ and Christ in the new man can only be seen where? In the epistles. So the epistles carries a greater revelation than the gospels. No wonder he says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Habit when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all the truth. So the epistles contains all the truth. That's why it is the diet of the believer. When he justified is in us glorified. The epistles reveal who we are in Christ. And who Christ is in us. The epistles are not prophecies, but promises fulfilled. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the preaching of the cross unto those that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved. Which are what? Which are saved. It is what? The power of God. That's why Jesus is called the Amen of God. He is called what? He said his name is Amen. Amen means fulfilled. Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecies and the promises. Are we together here? He's the Amen of God. And that is why he is made unto us righteousness. He is made unto us sanctification. He is made unto us wisdom. So we glory in Christ. Where do we glory? So the Christian life begins in Christ, continues in Christ, and ends. Exactly. It begins, it continues, it ends. If any man be where, he will never be anywhere else. The only place he will ever and always be will be in Christ. It begins in Christ, it continues in Christ, it ends in Christ. The epistles reveal this man, this man in Christ. So the epistles, therefore, are the mirror of the new creation. The epistles are what? The mirror of the new creation. If the new creation wants to know who he is, he has to look at the mirror called the epistles. The epistles are the mirror of the new creation. When you look at yourself, who you really are is revealed to you in the mirror. Now, 
The Old Testament shows us what should happen. The New Testament shows us what has happened. They are all prophecies. The Bible is called the prophecy. But there are two dimensions of prophecy. The Old Testament talks about what will happen. The epistles talk about what has happened. They are all revelations. But one revelation is a revelation of the future. Another revelation is a revelation of the past. That's why in the epistles you keep seeing, this is who you are. You have been made this. You have become this. You are this. You are that. It reveals to you what has already happened. So the epistles reveal the new creation. They are the mirror of the new creation. So in finding out who we are and in finding out what has happened to the believer, the epistles are the mirror that we see ourselves in. Now, one of the most powerful words you will ever speak, one of the most powerful sentences you will ever make in your life as a believer is to say, I am what the word says I am. That's one of the most powerful words. I am what the word says, I am. Irrespective of how I feel and what I see, I am. The word says I'm an heir of God. So who am I? An heir of God. The word says I'm righteous. I am what the word says, I am. I am not what I think. I'm not what I feel. I'm not what they say. I am what the word says, I am. That means the word is my mirror. And whatever I see in that mirror, that is who I am. And you cannot convince me otherwise. And when I know who I am, then I know what I have. I can't know what I have till I know who I am. When I know what I have, then I now know what I can do. But it begins with who I am. Yes. Once I know who I am, then I know what I have. When I know what I have, what I have shows me what I can do. Praise the Lord. And the mirror has all of that. The mirror says I'm righteous. I'm righteous. If the mirror says you are blessed, he didn't say I will become what the word says I am. What did he say? I am what the word says I am. Not I will become. I became what the word says I am. So right now, I am what the word says I am. I'm not going to be. That's who I am already. So the New Testament does not have promises. The New Testament are promises fulfilled. You won't find promises in the New Testament. But you will see fulfilled promises. James 1.22. But be it doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Next verse. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. Most believers are not living out their true identity because they've forgotten who they are. They forgot it. That's why we come to church all the time to get the word because the word reminds us who we are. And the more you stay away, the more you forget who you are. The more you forget who you are, the more you start wearing wrong labels. Then people start giving you identities that are not yours. And because you are forgotten who you are, you accept it. The prodigal son sat down in, in a pigry. The son of a royalty is sitting down in a piggery and is eating with pigs. He has forgotten who he is. When a believer begins to act funny, what do you think is the reason? He has forgotten what manner of man he is. He has forgotten who he is. That's why we stay in the world all the time. That's why we teach the world all the time. And that's why we, we cannot do without the world. We can do without anything else but not the word. This boy was eating with pigs comfortably till he remembered who he was. Hey, he stood up and said, what am I doing here? 
How many I have servants does my father have who have enough to eat and to spare? Well, what am I doing here? I will arise and go back to my father. He arose immediately. The moment you realize your identity, it changes everything. Changes everything. All struggles and every defeat ends. The moment you realize who you are, it changes everything. Even your prayer life changes. The boy arose. He said, I'm going to go back to my father. And, you know, unknown to the boy, the father was waiting for him. He didn't even, even need prayer. He didn't even need prayer. It is the father that was praying. When the, boy, when the father saw the boy from afar, the father ran towards the boy, smoothed the boy with kisses. And the boy began to say, I'm sorry, father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. He was wasting the father's time. The father interrupted the prayer and said, go and get my robe, go and get ring, and go and get shoes. And ask them to kill the fatted calf, my son. He wanted to come as a servant, but the father does not change the identity of his sons. His son is always a son. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth, key, key, continueth, key, continueth. He be not a forgetful hearer. So the problem is in forgetting. But a doer of the work, this man, Believers who fall into sin, fall into sin because they forget who they are. Simple. It doesn't mean they have lost who they are. They just forgot. When you forget who you are, you start acting funny. The moment you remember who you are, you start acting correct. How can you make sure you're not a forgetful hearer by hearing all the time? You stay in it. Peter was walking on the water until he turned his eyes. He stopped looking. As long as he was looking at Jesus, he walked on the water. He did the impossible. He achieved unusual things. He did exploits. But the moment he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look at the circumstances, he began to sink. When your eyes go off Jesus, you start sinking. And that's why the devil will do everything to keep you out of Bible study because he wants to take your eyes off Jesus. The world can only remind you Jesus. The world can only remind you what you cannot get. The only place where you are reminded of who you are in Christ is in the word. My son, attend to my word, incline their ears to my sayings for their life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. Next verse. If any man among you seem to be religious and brightly not his tongue but deceived his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Your tongue will not be bridled except your eyes are seen the right mirror. Yeah, when you are seeing the right mirror, you will be seeing the right things. When you are not seeing the right mirror, you will be seeing the wrong things. It's like a woman who looks at the mirror in the morning. No woman will stand at the mirror for one hour. No woman will do that because even jobless women will be tired of looking at the mirror and staring at the mirror for an hour. So that means most times, women are not able to look at the mirror for a long time. So when they go out and somebody says, ah, there's something on your face. What do, what do they start? They start doing like this, even without knowing where. They start touching the face because they have forgotten what they saw on that mirror. The, the, the comment of the person has casted a doubt on their impression of themselves. When you don't look at the word enough, and you go out and somebody says, are you even still in the faith? You start saying, Father, I'm sorry. Because immediately you are forgotten. When you don't look at the mirror long enough and the doctor says, you're not well. You take it. You don't know better. The image that the mirror gave you of your healing in Christ did not register. That is why what the doctor says registers. So the job of this new man is to stay with the mirror and continue to look.
You're tired of falling and rising as a believer. You stay on that mirror and keep seeing how righteous Christ has made you. Made you. Start seeing that when you got born again, he gave you power to become. Look at that mirror and see that sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. Look at that mirror and see that where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Look at that mirror and see that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to, to deny ungodliness. Look at that mirror very clearly. Amen. The problem is not what he saw. The problem is that the man who left the mirror forgot what he saw. The problem is not what he saw. He saw the writing, but he didn't register. When he left the image that he saw of himself. Now look at this. Everything you see in the mirror is you. Is it not so? When you look at the mirror, and you're a woman and you see the face of a man, You will look again. In fact, you clean the mirror. In fact, it will change the mirror. Because there are some mirrors that have help, that need help. When you look at your face on those mirrors, your head is bigger than that Abuja rock. It's a serious matter. And there are some mirrors, they, they twist your face. There are different kinds of mirrors. So the question today, will be, which mirror are you looking? Some people are looking at political mirror. And some people are looking at economic mirror. It depends on which mirror you're looking. I have made up my mind, no matter what the circumstances go like, I'm going to stay with the mirror of his word. Let all men be liars, and God's word alone be true. He that look at what you see in the mirror is who you are. The mirror of his world. The problem is believers don't continue in the mirror. The epistles are our mirror. When you got born again, he gave you a change of name. He gave you a new name. Righteous, holy, accepted, blessed, beloved. Is it not true? All those are names. Chosen, royal priesthood, elected, appointed predestinated, glorified. All those are your new names in him. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is our spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face. What is the meaning of open face? Faces that have no veil. Faces that look directly on the mirror. We are not looking at shadows. We are not looking at anything. We are looking directly at the sun. We see the glory of the Lord in the mirror. What do we see in the mirror? Talk to me. What do we see in the mirror? Who looked at the mirror? You. And when you looked at the mirror, what did you see? Who are you? Exactly. What you see in the mirror is who you are. We all with open face, beholding as in a mirror. What did we behold? The glory of the Lord. So who is the glory of the Lord on that mirror? Myself. The glory of the Lord, I change into the same image. Into the same image. Which image? The glory of the Lord. We are changing into that image from glory to glory. From the Old Testament to the New Testament even as by the spirit of the Lord. Somebody say with me, I am God's glory. So the new creation is God's glory. The epistles, therefore, are new creation realities. The embodiment of the whole teachings of the epistles are new creation realities. You know, in some churches, when they say new creation realities, what they mean is foundation class. The whole teaching of the epistles they are new creation realities or they are redemption realities. They are new creation realities or they are redemption realities or they are realities of our salvation. So back to the book of Ephesians where we are supposed to be doing our study. Ephesians 1.16. 
cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So to be able to know what Paul was trying to teach in Ephesians, you have to pay close attention to the prayer. The prayer contains the heart of Paul for the church at Ephesus. This prayer contains what Paul wanted to see in the believers at Ephesus. This prayer contains everything that Paul is trying to communicate to the church at Ephesus. So to understand the book of Ephesians, you must understand the prayer that Paul prayed for that church. Because that prayer is a true reflection of the desire of Paul for the people at Ephesus. Are we together here? All right, next verse. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, world, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And had put all things under his feet and gave him the head over all to the church. He is the head over all to the church. Can I hear your amen? So the epistles, therefore, are written to show you the, cre the new creation realities. Now, Paul's prayer in verse 6, 17 is that you may have the spirit of wisdom and revelation where? In, in the knowledge, in the wisdom and the revelation is where? In the knowledge of him. Not wisdom and revelation in science or psychology or, or motivation. Wisdom and revelation inside the knowledge of Christ. That word knowledge is the word epignosis. Epignosis. What is epignosis? It is a precise and complete and perfect knowledge of him. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. A precise, complete, perfect knowledge of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. If you're with me, can I hear a good amen? Now, if I have a precise, if I have a pignosis, if I have a precise knowledge of Christ, I will not call myself what I am not. To call myself what I am not means I don't have a pignosis of Christ. If I know him, I will call myself who he has called me. I am what God says I am. If I have a precise knowledge of him, I will not say something is futuristic that has already happened. I won't be saying, oh, Father, bless me. You know, I went somewhere to preach. And while I was preaching, in the midst of my message, power went out. Power just went out. Everything shut down. No microphones, nothing. So, I'm already calculating how to finish this message. Then I had somebody among the pastors. Oh, Lord, come down and manifest your power. <laughs> and everybody started saying, Oh, Lord, come down and manifest your power. <laughs> I wanted to laugh, but I couldn't laugh because it's a serious matter. If people are still singing such songs, No epignosis. Come down where? where? Where did he climb? So already from that song, you can tell that there is no epignosis. No knowledge of him. No accurate, precise, complete, perfect knowledge of him. Father, come down and heal this sister. Come down, come down. Heal her now. No epignosis. No accurate knowledge of Christ. He's in you. He's coming down from nowhere. 
You are an extension of him. So you lay hands on that sister and command her to be healed. She will be healed. I will not call something futuristic if I have a pignosis which Christ has already done. I'm teaching now. I said I'm teaching now. I will not call something a promise that has already happened if I have a pignosis. I will not call something else who I am. Three things it will do. When you have the knowledge of him and you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, somebody say in, in the knowledge of him, these are the things that will happen. Verse 18. Ephesians 1.18 The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance were in the sin. The epistles are given for you to know what is in his calling. What has he called you for and what is contained in that call. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The things that will be freely. The things that will be given. The things that are already freely given to us. Somebody say all things are already freely given to me in Christ. Freely given to us. In verse 18, it talks about the riches. Ephesians 1.18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance were in the saints. There is the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That glory of his inheritance in the saints is the wealth, the advantages, the resources available as inheritance. Of the saints in Christ Jesus. We have wealth. We have advantages. We have robust. Robust resources. Robust resources. Made available to us in Christ. You are not a victim. You are a victor. You are not conquered. You are more than a conqueror. There are advantages available to you. Resources that you cannot exhaust. It is called the inexhaustible riches of Christ. Inexplainable. The riches of Christ beyond measure. You are too loaded to fail. Amen. Amen. The inheritance, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Verse 19. The exceeding greatness of his power. To us what we believe according to the working of his mighty power. It has four of the most important words. That were used for what Jesus has done in the believer. What Christ has done in you. What Christ has done in you. Four of the most powerful words that describe what Christ has done in you is in that verse. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. The first word there is the exceeding greatness. The hooper balloon. Hooper balloon. It means to throw beyond the target. To throw beyond the target. Hoopa balloon. Exceeding greatness. The Hoopa balloon. To go beyond your reach. That is, this is how far you can reach. But because of that power in you, you went beyond your reach. Somebody say, I hear you. The Hoopa balloon. That is the first word. The exceeding. The exceeding greatness of his power. That power is dunamis. Self-generating power. No need of assistance for it to work. Dunamis. Self-generating power that does not need assistance from anybody for it to work. So, exceeding greatness. Dunamis. According to the working, that working is energy. 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 It means something that is effective. Something that displays strength. The exceeding greatness of his power 
to us what who believe according to the energy the walking the energy in one verse all of this was done in the believer that is in Christ whoa it's not going to be done as you're sitting here now you're carrying these things I'm talking and somebody's like but why don't I see you, you didn't know is in you, you need the epignosis of it. Yes, you need the epignosis. And that's what you're receiving right now. That the hyperbalon, the exceeding greatness of his dunamis, the working of his mighty power, something effective, displaying strength. That is, as we are speaking now, Enejo is doing something. As we are speaking, Enejo is at work. Exceeding greatness of his power to us, world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Mighty power is Kratos. Kratos, that's the Greek word. Kratos means might or strength. So, four of these things were wrought inside the believer the hyperbalon, dunamis, and the geos Kratos. All are contained inside the believer. The energy, hyperbalon, exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ. That all of this combination was what was wrought in Christ. And what was wrought in Christ is what is wrought in the believer. What he has we have. Where he is, we are. What he can do, we can do. It's inside you now, irrespective of how you feel. It's not a feeling. Yeah, it's not a feeling. It's a knowing. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So the believer has the exceeding greatness of God's power. You have it inside you. It's at work in you. This power was accomplished in Christ. Where was it accomplished? So henceforth, no, we know man after the flesh. For if any man be in Christ, the man Christ, the man Christ, the man Christ is a new creation. And we in him, joined with him, are the new creation. All things are past. In him, in whom? In him, in whom? In him, in whom? In whom we have redemption. In him, in whom? Somebody say, I have all of God's resources in me. So that's why Philemon was told by Brother Paul that the communication of your faith may be effectual by the epignosis, accurate, precise knowledge. If I have the precise knowledge of what Christ has done, I cannot be defeated, no matter what happens. But when a brother looks at his circumstances and he gets depressed, he does not have precise knowledge. To allow your circumstances control you means you don't have accurate epignosis, the knowledge of Christ, to know the knowledge of Christ. That was the prayer of Paul for the church at Ephesus. We have come a long way already in Ephesus. We've, we've looked at all the things in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 to the, to the end of chapter 1. These are the things that are wrought in the believer. To us what? To us what? Or toward us. This power was toward us when he raised Christ from the dead and set him at his right hand. And where he is is where we are. His resurrection is our resurrection. How many of you know that that death was my death? The burial was my burial. And the resurrection was my resurrection. The ascension was my ascension. The glorification is my glorification. Where he is seated is me sitting there. So why will I be singing, oh Lord, come down and manifest your power? The power is in me. Somebody say the power is in me. Exceeding greatness of his power. According to the working of his mighty power. The hyperbalon, dunamis, energy, kratos, all of this put together, combined together in the believer, 
brings the believer over. Somebody say, I am over. Yes. The power he accomplished in Christ. The power he accomplished in Christ. Mighty power, Kratos. Mighty power. Talk, talking about the muscle. Muscular ability. Strength. Strength. Strength in the believer. You don't give up on things. No, the strength. You pray, you don't faint. The strength. You go for evangelism, you're not tired. The strength. In the inner man was wrought in the believer. You will never fail. Somebody shall that's what is in me. In Christ. I look at the mirror. And at the mirror, I see who I am. I am what God says. I am. I am what God says. I am. He says I'm righteous. I'm righteous. He says I'm holy. I'm holy. He says I'm perfect. I'm perfect. He says I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. Amen. 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 That's who you are in him. Complete in him. Praise the Lord. And nothing can stand between you and God. Because you and God are in union. You are joined together. Nothing can come between you. Not even seen. Nothing can come between you. Amen. He has made up his mind to make you his home. He lives in you. So when you move, all of God is moving. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. I decree the remaining days of this week, you will see the, the manifestation of this world. Amen. You will walk in power. You will walk in victory. Amen. You will walk in dominion. Amen. You will walk in triumph. Amen. Somebody told me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say the power of God is at work on my inside. Ephesians 3.20 Thou unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that will come down. Where is the power? It's working in you right now. That power is in you. That is the power that raised Christ from the dead. Yes. Death should not defy you. Death should see you and behave itself. If you do not know the power at work in you, you will not have the exceeding manifestation. There should be no impossibility in the life of the believer. No impossibility. Because there is power at work in you. Father, I decree the remaining days of this week exploits for everyone. Many-sided exploits in the name of Jesus. Barriers are broken. Obstacles are terminated. Struggle cease. Struggle cease. Sickness and disease lose your holes. I command your body be well. Your heart be well. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that from this day, you will walk upon the face of the earth like God on the earth. In the name of Jesus. You are the new man in Christ. You are the new man in Christ. All things are passed away. All things are new. You are blessed. You cannot be cursed. You are what God says you are. You are lifted. You will not come down. Grace is upon your life. Favor is upon your life. Mercy is upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for great grace and favor. And thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. I thought somebody would shout that amen on a note of finality. Amen. Happy birthday from Triple G. Dr. Abel Damina is the founder and president of Abel Damina Ministries International and CEO of Kingdom Life Network, a Christian satellite TV channel covering Africa, America, Canada, and parts of Asia. He is the senior pastor of Power City International, a multifaceted, multicultural, and multinational gospel center where thousands meet weekly to worship God. He is also the president of Abel Damina Online Mentoring Academy, Aduma, and Abel Damina Ministerial Equipping Network, Admin, with mentees across the globe. Dr. Abel Damina hosts the TV program Righteous Invasion of Truth Riot 
together with the Ask the Counselor series on Kingdom Life Network and other broadcasting stations in Nigeria through which millions are being transformed across the world. He is happily married to his sweetheart Rachel and they are blessed with three lovely ladies, Jemima, Jesse Mill and Jael, the Triple J Plus singing sensation and producers of the Neptune 3 Studios. My name is Sophie Obo. I'm the coordinator of Berkshire Slough Campus in the United Kingdom. It's a privilege to have Papa as our spiritual father, a mentor and a teacher and our pastor. And we thank God for Papa's life, for teaching us so well and for feeding us with the entire counsel of God. He continues to labor in season and out of season, equipping us to know who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and what Christ can do through us. He's equipping us and has made us to become able ministers of the New Testament. We are grateful for such a gift that God has given to the body of Christ in this end time. I want to wish Papa once again a very glorious happy birthday and many happy returns of the day. The grace of God continue to be in him. He strengthened with might in his inner man by the spirit. He's delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. He has great utterance, boldness and confidence to continue to teach us the entire counsel of God. And we know that the word of God is growing throughout the globe. And the knowledge of the glory of God will continue to cover this earth, even as the waters cover the sea through the teaching of our Papa. Happy glorious birthday, Papa. We love you and I love you more. The world stands still today to give honor to a man who is given to much simplicity. And all over the world, men have received clarity and focus from the ministry of Dr. Abel Damina through the online mentoring academy, the intensive power Bible school held every year and the teaching meetings held in the local church. He is given to much prayer and much devotion and commitment to the study of God's word and this has brought about a mighty global restructuring in the body of Christ today through his ministry. We want to say a very blissful and happy birthday to our father, Dr. Abel Damina fondly called Global Baba. And we constantly pray for you that more men will come to know Jesus through you and the word of God has free course through you and your ministry. This is saying cheers to many more years of blanketing the entire blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. Glory! My name is Pastor Simeon, all the way from uh, Power City Campus, Kuje Abuja. Uh, I bring greetings um, and happy birthday to Papa from uh, the entire members of uh, Power City Kuje Campus. Papa, I want to say that we love you. We thank you for building ministry out of us. Thank you for your impact. I want to assure you that what you are doing for us, we are feeling it all over the world. And we pray for you on this um, occasion of your birthday that ministry continue to prosper in your hand. We declare that you are preserved and protected today from the hands of unreasonable men. Papa, we thank you so much. We love you. And we say big happy birthday to you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I believe you've been affected and impacted by the word of God. Now, I decree and I declare that the word you receive today, revelation knowledge keeps increasing in your heart. You will walk in these realities and you will live an overcomer's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, remember, there's the Global Discipleship Academy and Registration is going on right now. It's a free online academy where I equip you and train you on the basics, the fundamentals that helps you to live out the riches of redemption. If you have never been discipled before, even if you're in a church somewhere, you've never been discipled before, you've been a Christian, nobody has discipled you before. Oh my goodness, this is your opportunity. You know, discipleship doesn't mean you're a new Christian. It just means that we're able to take you through certain rudiments that also empowers you to disciple other people in the knowledge of Christ. Second Timothy 2 to Paul says to Timothy, the things you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who shall in turn commit to others. So if you want to join the academy today, don't procrastinate. There's an email address on the screen. You can shoot an email to us right now. And also, there's a WhatsApp number. You can shoot a WhatsApp request and we're willing to quickly make sure you are enlisted in the Global Discipleship Academy. It's an opportunity you don't want to miss at all. Tell other people about it because this is very, very critical and crucial because the foundation of your Christian life is very critical. It determines everything that you do as a child of God. Secondly, my books are available. I want to encourage you to order for them. There's a phone number and there's an email. These are my new books, How to Win in Life, Walking in Love. The second one is The Gifts and Calling of God. The third one is Spirit Life. These are new. They just came out. They will empower and equip you to walk in victory. Also, there's a Christocentric meal, our daily devotional material. And you can also use it as a pastor for sermon notes in your church for three good years without repeating any message. It's a tool that empowers and equips you to fulfill your ministry effectively. We love you guys. Always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Till I come back to you again on this same platform, enjoy the grace of God and be blessed. Amen.